and welcome to another Luminar Coffee Break. I'm your host, Vanelli. Now, our topic today is using Lightroom to replace the sky using Luminar. So, how to replace the sky in Lightroom using Luminar. So, what we're going to do first is I'll show you how, to, how we set everything up, all the plugins, to make sure all of that is set, and then some of the best settings to use when you export from Lightroom over into Luminar. Now, before we begin, we just want to take a quick moment and want to thank our partner, uh, Fujifilm, for helping make these episodes possible. And you, if you like what we're doing, please make sure you hit the thumbs up. Um, it just gives us a little validation that what we're doing, people are liking what, what we have to offer. And as always, please leave your comments below. So, Fujifilm, thank you very much for being our partner. Now, here in Florida, um, they opened up a lot of the areas that we can go to. And you saw earlier, I did some photo shoots of the kitten outdoors. And on a rainy day, I used the macro lens to take shots of the flowers. Well, with the, the X-T3 Fuji camera they gave me, I want to go out to the beach. And I did do a photo shoot uh, with a, friend, a model friend of mine uh, a few weeks back on the beach. I want to go again, and I think I'm going to photograph a beautiful cute little baby um, and we'll see how the telephoto lens works for a long portrait lens and then the 80 which even though it's a macro lens it, it'll be it'd be considered a short portrait lens so an 80 is a short portrait lens 70 to 200 at that 200 would be a long portrait lens so we'll see what happens all right well let's dive into this so here we are I'm inside um, uh, Luminar right now, the first thing I need to do is, <clears throat> is make sure I have the plugins installed. So from the file menu, let me make sure I have the pointer set. I'll come down and select install plugins. And sure enough, we have the Photoshop plugin installed. And I also have the Lightroom plugin installed. Now, typically, these are already installed when you install Luminar for the first time. But sometimes, you know, if you didn't allow it or if there was a glitch, make sure you check here first to make sure that those are on. So now that I have it, I can close out of this. And now I'm inside Lightroom. So from inside Lightroom, <clears throat> excuse me, I thought this was uh, set up as default. Like when I right click, edit in, and there's Luminar. Um, but I was told apparently I set that up at some point using Luminar. So I'm going to show you how I set that up just in case you don't see that when you right click on an image. So I'm going to come over to the edit menu and under preference, I'll click on preference. Now here we are, the external or the additional external editor. Now if you had other plugins, you would actually put the preset there and that's just another way of doing it. Obviously since we're using Luminar, we'll use Luminar here. So I do want to use the file format JPEG. I want it to come back as a JPEG, Adobe RGB, and then the 8-bit um, component. Now, earlier I did this very similar um, class, or coffee break, on Facebook, and they were asking, why JPEG? Now, I'm picking JPEG because <clears throat> excuse me, the file sizes are smaller, and as long as I don't keep saving the JPEG back to the JPEG, if I save as, then it's a completely new file. And if there's no, I'm not losing precious um, data. But like in Photoshop, if you just have a JPEG open and you hit file save, it's saving on top of the lossless file and it's saving an additional loss. It's throwing away some pixels. So whenever you're working with JPEGs, <coughs> always use. Always use save as, save as. Here, since we're doing it, what's gonna happen is it's gonna make a copy of that TIFF file as a JPEG, shoot it over to Luminar, we do our thing, and when it comes back, it saves as that new file. So we're not losing that much uh, compression, all right? So with that being said, I like the setting. Now what I did do differently 
is under the template for the file name, edit, I put the word Luminar at the end of the file name. So it'll keep the original information, the name, and then dash Luminar. Now the reason I did this was um, so I know that that image was actually saved or it was actually created using Luminar. All right. So I have all that set and we'll click OK. Now we're ready to go. Now you have two options here. You could start and develop this image like you normally do inside Lightroom. So I would probably do this and, and it's good. Let's see before that's zooming in. There we go before and after. So it did a pretty good job, you know, helping balance the exposure. Let's see the shadows. I probably bring the shadows out a little bit more. <coughs> Excuse me. So, you know, it, did, it does a good job, but we're going to use Luminar to replace the sky and to add some killer, um, just to make it look sharper. All right. So right click settings. And I'm going to reset it. Now, here we go. Right click, add it in, and I'm going to choose Luminar. Now, I guess I could have said just edit the original, but I don't. I want to edit a copy. And let's say I did make Lightroom adjustments here. That's when I would put it. If I didn't make any, if I don't want the Lightroom adjustments, I would come in and edit just a copy of this. All right. And edit. And Luminar is going to fire up. Good. Now, once it's up, let me show you. I already created the look for it. I'm going to just show you what I did with the look. So here's the, the, the image itself. And it's definitely underexposed. And the reason it's underexposed is I'm sure the camera was trying to expose for that sky and made everything else a silhouette. So within a few minutes, this is what I came up with. Oh, look at that. Using Luminar. All right. Just real quick. See what tools we're, we're dealing with. We have the light tool, which is like development, AI enhancer, color and details. So that's going to be out of our essential tools. And then, of course, the sky replacement out of the creative tools. And then we'll come down and we'll work with the advanced contrast. All right. So from the history palette, I'm going to start with the original and let's start again. So notice we have all the same tools as we would inside um, the, the standalone version. So we still have the same tools. I could use layers and everything else that I normally would do. The difference is we started with Lightroom and then we opened it up in Luminar. All right. So here we are. Uh, I'm going to come back to the light tool for a moment, but I want to start and just really crank that up. Ooh, look at that. Now I'll come back to the light tool. And I definitely want to increase some of the shadows. And let's put a little smart contrast in here. Good. Click on the advanced settings. And here, I do want to bring the blacks. I want to enrich the blacks a little bit and bring out the whites. All right. That looks good. Now for the color, we'll come in here with the saturation. I'm going to crank it up just a little bit because I want this to really be red. And then for the vibrancy, look at this. That's going to help us really bring up that color more. Good. See if there's a color cast. And just a little bit right there. All right, that looks good. Let's go back to the light tool and bring up more of the shadows. Yeah, there we go. That's much better. All right. So I have that set. And now for details. I want to add a little more. Uh, I want to add more details in the shot just to make it pop. Look at this. Before and after. Here we are. Now, here's where, once we get this set. So we, we set it up now. I could have done the sky replacement right away, but I like getting the image partly developed first. And then once it's developed, then I jump back in and do the creative stuff. So let's click on the creative tool set, sky replacement. 
and I believe it was sky number five. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, sky five looks good. Let's see if it was four. Ooh, I like four too. I right, should look at this before and after. So it's not going overboard. It's giving us that, it's giving us that little extra. Um, let's see, Heather. Yeah, that was yesterday. I hope I had that correctly. Um, I hope I, I didn't, I hope I had the right the settings on this. Yeah, so we did this, Heather. We, are, we actually have that. So if you look, you'll see it. But here we're working with Lightroom into um, Luminar. So I have that set. Now I'm going to come down to the Advanced Tools and Advanced Contrast. Let's work on that highlight. Look at that. Good. And then I want to bring out the shadows a little more. There we are. Let's see what this does for us. Look at that. Before and after. So instead of just having the highlight slider, here we can, we can actually work with the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows. Good. And I do like, oh, there's a little too much blue here. So let's go back to the color. And let's see if the color cast is helping a little bit more. Good. And I'm going to come back down to the blues. And let's, let's bring the blues. There we go. A little darker. Good. And one more thing we can do since this is sky. Oh, look at that. Oh, I like it. All right. And one last thing I want to do is let's see if the structure will add anything to the image. A little too much. And we're right about there. Great. So look, here it is before and after. Good, and we'll click apply. And now, once we click apply, <coughs> it's going to bring us back into Lightroom, and it'll take the file name and add Luminar at the end of this. So this way, I know that that image was actually created right here. That image was created using Luminar, and again, you can use that for other plugins if you need to. And let it have time to refresh. There it is. So we went from this, which is still a TIFF, to here, replacing that sky. Look at how the sky just really makes a huge difference with this. So there we have it. So again, it's important that we set up Lightroom properly to where you, if you decide, if you want to work with TIFFs, then instead of doing the JPEG that I had, change it to TIFF, and I'd recommend the 16-bit, bring it over into... Luminar, do your thing, and then bring it back in again. So, guys, uh, and for the one, who was it? Um, here we go. There, we, we, I'm sorry, I'm trying to answer some of the questions. It was Heather. So, hello, hello, Emmanuel. So, Heather, yes. Um, Heather made a comment. She thought maybe we had the wrong coffee break. I hope not. So, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to open up a browser. And one second, Skylum Academy. Here we go. So, so Heather, um, we can come right over here to podcast. And under the podcast, click on coffee break. And these are all the coffee breaks that we had. All right. So right here was the food one you were talking, you, you were looking at that Nicole taught yesterday, and I taught one early in the morning. Class is coming up. We do have Nicole Young teaching tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time. She'll be teaching Capturing the Beauty of Nature. And then I'll be teaching a class on the 15th, up and running with Luminar 4. And we'll all see some of the past events that we have here. So if, if you're looking for more information, and more of the coffee breaks or more knowledge on Luminar, check out Skylum.com 
forward slash academy. Well, I'm Vanelli. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you at the next coffee break.